Καλώ στο βήμα το Διευθυντή Έρευνα του Ινστιτούτου Οικονομικών Ερευνών του Βερολίνου, καθηγητή οικονομικών στο Πανεπιστήμιο του Πόνσταμ και ερευνητή στο EZA, IZA τη Βόνη, κύριο Αλέξανδρο Κριτικό. Dear Minister Mitsotakis, dear Vice Minister Rachel, dear Head of the EU Task Force for Greece, Reichenbach, dear Ambassador Dorit, Excellencies, colleagues from the university and the research environment, ladies and gentlemen. When we first discussed this conference a year ago, we could read in the newspapers, mostly the non-Greek newspapers, that Greece has no civil society, that Greece, in Greece nobody cares for the country, and Greece is no, in Greece nobody is willing to do anything for this country. Ladies and gentlemen, if this would have been true, I can assure you this conference would not have been organized, and I can assure you this room would be empty. And I can tell you, I talked in the last year to many people in this room, and what I felt was that there are many, many individual energies to bring this country ahead, to make it more innovative, and to create something like a vision and a better future for the young people. So I think the first applause which is uh, deserved in this room is a welcome to all of you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. But we all know <coughs> that we are here because not everything is well in Greece. We are here because we need to discuss certain things very openly, and we all know that certain things need to be changed, and we should start discussing this here, now, in the next two days. If we just think uh, more than 2,000 years ago back, Greece was the leading country in natural sciences, like mathematics, physics, astronomy. I'm not telling you this because in my spare time, I'm a philhellenic uh, person just dreaming of the good old days. I'm telling you this for another reason. There's a myth that research then was just for theory, for the niceness of research. This is wrong. Already then, research was for the practical benefits. And one of the best examples is the mechanism of Antikythera. This was more or less the first analog computer and the first navigating system something we use today like on an everyday business, but this was then a really radical innovation. And until the second movers came in, it lasted 1,600 years. So this was radical innovation, this was Greek. Looking to today, <clears throat> after the crisis in Greece, a raft of policy recommendations were put together, austerity measures were put together, institutional reforms were started, and there are many economists who believe that Greece will find out its way out of this crisis just doing austerity measures and institutional reforms. And this is why we are here. We believe that it needs more than just this. And why this is so is something we can really relatively easily find out when we just start comparing Greece with the other countries in the Eurozone. If we do that, we see Greece lacks a functioning innovation system. Greece lacks an established innovation-oriented industry structure. I'm not talking about rust belts, an innovation-oriented industry structure. It has increasing but fragmented innovation activities, but still, despite all your activities you are doing, it is still scoring in the industrial innovation scoreboard on place 20 out of 27. And we could show many, many pictures why this is so. I will just show you one. Um, there is a, thumb, a, a rule of thumb uh, with respect to R&D expenditures. And this rule of thumb says, spend 3% of your annual GDP in research and development. And Greece is not spending 3%, it's not spending 2%, it's not even spending 1%, it's spending about 0.5%. And this tells you why the Greek innovation system is not in the best shape. Having discussed this in the last year, I also was very often confronted, why innovation? Why, why is that so important? Um, 
Instead of giving you many arguments, I will just make one quote of Stephen Landsberg, who said, just over 100 years ago, the Scientific American reported that economic progress in Manhattan was near an end. Why? Because the island could, not, could support only a limited number of horses. In the long run, economic growth comes not from cramming more horses onto your island, and also it comes not from cramming more tourists onto your island, or more factories into your rust belt, or even more information onto your servers, but from technological breakthroughs. Not from more of the same, but from the new and the previously unthinkable. And if you want to create this, you cannot plan it, but what you can do is you can create an innovation system. And how does that look like? Or why do we need an innovation system? We just need to look on innovation chains. And what we will see there, these innovation chains start with a kind of basic research, more theory-oriented, with smooth transitions to applied research, where really practical solutions are found to, to problems around innovative activities. And if this is smooth further on to startups and high-tech entrepreneurs, they will be able to make products out of this. And once first plans are raised, you will see venture capital come from its own. And if the regulatory environment is open to new entrepreneurs, you will see some of these companies will really grow. Of course, what you also need is trust and non-exploitative networks and knowledge spillovers. And this is what you mostly get when you get into these research institutes, the top researchers of the world. Let me mention one last thing. You not, do not only need entrepreneurs, you also need management. Those people who bring these ideas really on the street outside. Now, this is what we call an innovation saying, a very simple uh, fact. And um, if we look now to Greece, what do we see? First of all, we see a wall, a really huge wall, not allowing the high-tech entrepreneurs to get into the market. When I'm talking about this huge wall, I'm talking about the unbelievable bureaucratic hassles which are uh, confronting Greek entrepreneurs. And because this is so, we see that there's no need for management. And we also see that uh, networks disappear. We see the venture capital goes to other countries where this wall is less high. And we see many of the entrepreneurs, not those who are here today, many entrepreneurs go to other countries where the wall is lower. And as there is no need for such very applied research, we also do not find much of applied research in Greece. So this is the picture we are currently observing in Greece. And of course it is rather roughly said, some things might be better, but this is the picture. And the question is what do we need to do and what needs to be discussed in these next two days? And there's uh, let's say, before we do this, let me, let me point to one more issue. Um, if, if people stay, start saying, I don't believe in this kind of uh, context between the ease of doing business and the innovation performance, then just like, let's have a look on this picture. Here you see on the, on the right side the ease of doing business ranking of the World Bank. And the higher the number is, the higher the wall is. And you can see Greece is on place 80. And on the upper side, you see the innovation performance of countries, and you see Greece is scoring very low. So this is a relatively obvious uh, correlation between the ease of doing business, the level how high the wall is, and the, uh, the possibility to be innovative in a certain country. So when we discuss in the next two days what needs to be done, then it is relatively clear that this wall needs to be torn down. Somebody has to tear this wall down. And we know that uh, Minister uh, Hadzidakis in Berlin promised this year in Berlin in, in July that he will do what he can to reduce this wall. And I'm sure he needs support in this. And I'm sure the Greek parliament needs support in this. So whenever you talk to these people, Tell them that this wall really needs to be torn down because otherwise you won't see much entrepreneurs acting in Greece. The second thing is there is need for heavy investment in applied research. And if these two things will happen, you will see that 
and many entrepreneurs will show up, you will see that venture capital will come more to this country. And if you succeed in getting top researchers into these research centers, then you will see that these kind of networks and spillovers will be created. And let me mention one last thing. When you create such a thing, then you will also see that the Greek diaspora will be very supportive. So the bad news is there's a fragmented innovation system, but the good news is there is something there. The innovation system doesn't have to be built from the scratch because what we know as well is if you need to build this from the scratch, it's most probably that you will fail. So there are some hidden assets. There are a number of mostly basic research institutes producing top research output here in Greece. We know that there's a huge number of Greek researchers working in the diaspora and some of them are here today. We know that the initial steps have been done for cooperation between these kind of research institutes and there is a great, great number of innovative entrepreneurs and SMEs in Greece and more of them, of course, currently outside of Greece. And then there's one last hidden asset which should be raised more than the others. The quality of life in Greece is not only here to attract tourists, you also can attract top research because they also do care about the quality of life. So when we will discuss the policy steps which we believe in the next two days with about 40 persons we have invited from all over the world, Greeks, Greek diaspora researchers, Americans, Swiss, Chinese, Europeans, from everywhere you can imagine. And I would thank you very much for coming here. Um, when we will discuss these things, I think before we do this, we need to make three things clear. We need to create a vision for Greece where it should stand in 10 years from now, because this will create a dynamic for every person to believe in this vision. But the vision also needs specific targets, how you want to realize this vision. And the third thing is you have to create awareness, acceptance, and support for the vision in the Greek society. I will just mention very shortly the 10 steps, most of them we will discuss here. First of all, the improvement of the regulations. Just giving you one example, today people who want to create a new company need more than a month to create it. In other countries you can do this in two hours, just online. This is, for instance, a real radical innovation in the regulatory environment. We need to discuss how legislation can be simplified wherever in Greece it is conflicting, uh, uh, conflicting legislation and the one and the same topic. We need to discuss how the research institutes can be expanded, how new ones can be established, and we also need to discuss what research and universities need to be created. We need to touch the point that incentives have to be given to top researchers to come to Greece. And if you talk about incentives, it's not only money, it's also freedom of research. Corporations and need, research networks need to be expanded. Risk-bearing capital needs to be provided for entrepreneurs. But it's not only the risk-bearing capital, it's also supporting services, managerial capacities for entrepreneurs to get their ideas on the street. It's also something which has not been discussed so far, politics, how to tap the diaspora potentials. It's also to think about whether the regional and local authorities need to be incentivized to attract entrepreneurs. And last but not least, as the last policy step, is to create awareness, acceptance and support in the Greek society for this policy. Let me thank you very much, uh, all the organizers of this conference, all the supporters, which is the Vienidis Foundation. Thank you very much for supporting us in organizing this. Thank you to the task force who helped very, very much to get this together. Thank you also to the Bodosakis Foundation, the German Embassy, and the Eurobank who helped us to get this conference uh, put together. Now, let me, let, let me make one last point before I give the word again to Anna Grimani. We know what we will discuss here in these two days is something where we have a straight thinking ahead and researchers do always believe once you said something, you can go the street and it's done. We also know that politics works different. And we know that politics sometimes need a detour, which is necessary. 
And sometimes you need a long detour if you want to realize these policy steps which we will discuss, and sometimes maybe even an eight-war detour. But I think, and we will certainly all be sure that it is worth to try to win this race because when we talk about vision, then my, at least my personal vision is to get Greece from down there, up there to these other innovative countries if we succeed in doing these three steps which we discuss here in the next two days. Thank you very much.